It feels like we're all suffering from information overload or data glut. And the good news is there might be an easy solution to that, and that's using our eyes more. So visualizing information so that we can see the patterns and connections that matter. And then designing that information so it makes more sense, or it tells a story, or allows us to focus only on the information that's important. Failing that, visualized information can just look really cool. So let's see. This is the billion dollar ogram. And this image arose out of frustration I had with the reporting of billion dollar amounts in the press. That is, they're meaningless without context. 500 billion for this pipeline, 20 billion for this war. It doesn't make any sense. So the only way to understand it is visually and relatively. So I scraped a load of reported figures from various news outlets and then scaled the boxes according to those amounts. And the colors here represent the motivation behind the money. So purple is uh, fighting, and red is giving money away, and green is profiteering. And what you can see straight away is you start to have a different relationship to the numbers. You can literally see them. But more importantly, you start to see patterns and connections between numbers that would otherwise be scattered across multiple news reports. Let me point out some that I really like. This is OPEC's revenue, this green box here, 780 billion a year. And this little pixel in the corner, 3 billion, that's their climate change fund. Americans, incredibly generous people, over 300 billion a year donated to charity every year, compared with the amount of foreign aid given by the top 17 industrialized nations at 120 billion. And then, of course, the Iraq war predicted to cost just 60 billion back in 2003, and the mushroom slightly Afghanistan and Iraq mushroom now to 3,000 billion. So, now, it's great, because now we have this texture and we can add numbers to it as well. So we can say, well, a new figure comes out, let's see, African debt. How much of this diagram do you think might be taken up by the debt that Africa owes to the West? Let's take a look. So there it is, 227 billion is what Africa owes. And the recent financial crisis, how much of this diagram might that figure take up? What does that cost the world? Let's take a look at that. Douche, which I think is the appropriate sound effect from that much money. <laughs> 11,900 billion. Can you guess what this data set is? What rises twice a year, once in Easter, and then two weeks before Christmas, has a mini peak every Monday, and then flattens out over the summer? I'll take answers. Chocolate. You might want to get some chocolate in. Any other guesses? Shopping. Uh, yeah, retail therapy might help. Sick leave. Sick leave, yeah, you'll definitely want to take some time off. Shall we see? <laughs> so, uh, information guru Lee Byron and myself, we scraped 10,000 status Facebook updates for the phrase break up and broken up, and this was the pattern we found. People clearing out for spring break. <laughs> uh, coming out of very bad weekends on the Monday. Being single over the summer. And then the lowest day of the year, of course, Christmas Day. Who would do that? <laughs> I feel like every day, all of us now are being blasted by information design. It's being poured into our eyes through the web. And we're all visualizers now, and we're all demanding a visual aspect to our information. Um, and there's something almost quite magical about visual information. It, it's, it's effortless. It literally pours it in. And if you're in navigating a dense information jungle, coming across a beautiful graphic or a lovely data visualization, it's a relief. It's like coming across a clearing in the jungle. And I was curious about this, so I, it led me to the work of a Danish physicist called Tor Noritranders. And he converted the bandwidth of the senses into computer terms. So here we go. This is your senses pouring into your senses every second. Your sense of sight is the fastest. It has the same bandwidth as a computer network. Then you have touch, which is about the speed of a USB key. And then you have hearing and smell, which is the throughput of a hard disk. And then you have poor old taste, which is like rarely the throughput of a pocket calculator. And that little square in the corner, 0.7%. 
That's the amount we're actually aware of. So a lot of your vision is pouring, the bulk of it is visual, and it's pouring in, it's unconscious. And the eye is exquisitely sensitive to patterns in variations in color, shape, and pattern. It loves them, it calls them beautiful. It's the language of the eye. And if you combine the language of the eye with the language of the mind, which is about words and numbers and concepts, you start speaking two languages simultaneously, each enhancing the other. But it kind of can go beyond data and it can go beyond numbers. And I like to apply information visualization to ideas and concepts. This is a visualization of the political spectrum, an attempt for me to try and understand how it works and how the ideas percolate down from government into society and culture, into families, into individuals, into their beliefs, and then back round again in a cycle. What I love about this image is it's, it's made up of concepts that explores our worldviews, and it helps us, or it helps me anyway, to see what others think and to see where they're coming from. And it feels just incredibly cool to do that. And what was most exciting for me designing this was that when I was designing this image, I desperately wanted this side, the left side, to be better than the right side, being a kind of journalist, left-leaning person. But I couldn't because I would have created a lopsided, biased diagram. So in order to really create a full image, I had to honor the perspectives in, on the right-hand side and at the same time kind of uncomfortably recognize how many of those qualities were actually in me which is very, very annoying and uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Just to wrap up, I want to say that it feels to me that design is about solving problems and providing elegant solutions. And information design is about solving information problems. And it feels like we have a lot of information problems in our society at the moment, from the overload and the saturation to the breakdown of trust and reliability and runaway skepticism and lack of transparency, or even just interestingness. I mean, I find information just too interesting. It has a magnetic quality that draws me in.